So what does the likely COVID-19 patient look like? An African-American male between 40 and 64 years old, living in an urban or suburban setting, as a middle income worker with one or more chronic illnesses and average health risk factors overall. So when attempting to assess what areas or issues affect morbidity or mortality for uh, African-Americans particularly, we wanna look at a larger set or theory to help us understand what might be happening that's increasing the likelihood for case rates and likelihood for death for African-Americans. When we wanna look at a complex disease that has not only biological, but also social and economic factors, we generally use a, a social ecological approach because it addresses societal level factors such as policy, public policy, uh, discrimination, economics, and the overall environmental factors, societal level factors that include more community, neighborhood factors, race, ethnicity, and then how that uh, applies socioeconomically. And then individual level factors, genetics, socioeconomics, behaviors and health choices and attitudes, and how all of those might play a role in COVID-19. So starting with individual factors, we recognize that genetic factors do not appear to be an indicator in the risk for contracting or dying from COVID-19. As an example, African nations have fewer cases and deaths than the US. And especially when we look at Senegal and Ghana with their efforts at testing, contact tracing, treatment and mitigation, these nations of 16 and 30 million uh, residents have only had deaths under 100 during this time. So we recognize that genetics may not play a role in COVID-19. We may not have heard as much of Senegal and Ghana, however, though, and the efforts that they've had in attempting to lower the curve because we don't generally hear from African nations or third world nations about the positive aspects that might be occurring within their environment. We also know that the recent issues and rates for the children's COVID cases are the multi-system inflammatory syndrome that children are exhibiting. We see that those rates are approximately equal, around 20% for cases for both whites, Latinos, and Hispanics. And so we don't see those initial efforts that would normally come to play for genetics that would show an increased risk. We also recognize that behavioral health choices and health behavior choices may not be a factor because the rates of smoking, substance use, and alcohol use are approximately equivalent to whites, where approximately 11 to 15% of whites, Latinos, are African-Americans smoke cigarettes. About 23 to 27% use alcohol and 10 to 15% may use uh, substances or drugs. Although policing may lead to increased rates of arrest for those in some communities, the actual use for those communities is actually even. When we take a look at COVID-19 data across the world, we see similar but not the large extent of disparities for blacks uh, throughout the world. In the UK, blacks are four times more likely to die of COVID than whites. And South Asians, namely Bangladesh, Pakistani or Indians are almost twice as likely to die than, than whites in the UK. This has particularly affected the National Health Service because the NHS workers, including doctors, nurses, and higher socioeconomic um, employees 90% of NHS workers that have died during the COVID-19 epidemic were among these groups, Blacks and South Asians. And so that's actually controlling for social economic factors, recognizing that social economics don't play a role either in COVID risks or risks for death. In France, the Saint-Denis region, which is uh, an area surrounding Paris, has twice the rate of uh, COVID deaths than the white regions that are surrounding the city of Paris. And the only country in Africa that has a similar disparity rate 
uh, as these other nations is South Africa. But although we see a four times rate in some countries, blacks, U.S. blacks have almost a six times rate likelihood to die by COVID than whites. And so we see that there's additional issues than individual factors. Social factors that can contribute to these comorbidities include a number of areas that we've known for some time are disparate for African-Americans. Housing issues, including redlining, urban density, dilapidated housing, lack of investment or infrastructure for cities, and toxic air, soil, or waste where African-Americans might live, food deserts, infrastructure for exercise, and access to healthcare or outdoor recreation all lead as contributing factors to potentially obesity, where we might have food deserts or the cost of healthy foods and without exercise, the risk for hypertension, cortisol levels and stress or immune changes due to experiencing discrimination, respiratory diseases, where living in environmentally unsafe areas with poor air quality and then high density living without sufficient ventilation can increase the risk for these disorders. Lack of safe exercise opportunities with food deserts or access to preventive health may increase the risk for diabetes and environmental issues, high density living and lack of access to preventive health services increases the risk for cancer. And we see increasing disparities for all of these diseases with the African-American community. Social factors that affect these comorbidities also include the essential work of status that we've heard so much during this COVID-19 crisis. Blacks make up 15 to 30% of essential workers during these in these high uh, needs groups, hospital workers, grocery store workers, bus and urban transit. Latinos make up 10 to 20% of the population of these essential workers. So we recognize that they've not been able to shelter in place or to uh, shut down during the COVID crisis. When we look at those that are able to work from home during this time, we see that Asians are the most likely to be able to have jobs that allow them to work from home at 37%, whites at 25%, and blacks only at 19%, with Latinos at 16%. So it's more likely that they've had to work during the COVID crisis and as such may be likely to be exposed to those with the coronavirus. We see that more specifically when analyzing the risk of exposure due to illnesses or due to infectious diseases that has been recently done and surveyed for all groups. That one-to-one -one exposure in particular exposes someone to uh, COVID-19 and so the more frequency that we have of exposure and encounters, the more likelihood of someone contracting COVID-19. We see that nurses play uh, the highest role in interacting in their patients as part of their workplace. Cashiers, meat packers, law enforcement, and other frontline responders also have very high rates of exposure to those potentially infected with COVID-19 so that that increases their likelihood of contracting COVID-19. So how do those social factors come to play, particularly for the health of African-Americans in the US? We know that social determinants of health and health inequities, including poverty, discrimination, environmental issues, and access to care, then increase the risk of experiencing uh, chronic illnesses problems with nutrition and access to good nutrition, exercise and leading to obesity or hypertension or other chronic illnesses, increase the likelihood for morbidity risk for African-Americans. These diseases then cumulatively, cumulatively increase the risk for potential mortality and then access to healthcare and what we might see is the interaction or implicit biases within healthcare may increase the likelihood of that interface for health services to increase the risk for COVID contraction and COVID mortality. Then when we look at a societal level, we see how individual and social factors 
contribute even more fully to the experience for African Americans. Exposure to social discrimination through media, schools, correction issues, law enforcement issues, increases the level of distrust in systems, particularly legal or medical systems. Past minority health issues then affect someone from a biological and psychological level. So ongoing issues and exposure to discrimination increases the likelihood for depression symptoms, anxiety, distrust in services, and leading to hopelessness and changes in how someone responds from their stress and immune system. This is also very important when we look at long-term chronic illnesses, because the more our immune systems are stressed or charged by those experiences that we see, the more likely that, we're, that someone may develop diseases and develop these chronic health issues. And we see those even in children that are exposed to traumas related to these same biological and discrimination issues, they're more likely to develop, to develop asthma. They're more likely to, as they age, to develop other issues during adolescence. And these continue to increase the risk as they grow to adulthood. All of these come into play then as we have healthcare interaction issues, access to care, coverage for services, and biases that we see within the healthcare system all lead to poorer health outcomes for African-Americans. 